I'm James Joey, I'm a neurologist. The three topics I'll talk about are headache, stroke, and epilepsy. But before I do that, I probably would want to define who a neurologist is. A neurologist is a subspecialist of a physician. A physician is somebody who has trained in general medicine and gone on to specialize in internal medicine. Neurology is now uh, the diseases that comprise any problems within the brain, the spinal cord, uh, the spinal nerves, peripheral nerves, and muscles. Stroke. What is stroke? Stroke is a sudden onset neurological deficit, meaning an impairment of neurological function that happens suddenly and is caused because of an effect in the vascular blood supply to the brain. So the important thing here is it is sudden onset. Somebody could be walking and suddenly falls and they realize they are paralyzed on one side. Or somebody could be sitting on the table and suddenly slumps over and when you examine them, you find that they are paralyzed on one side of the body, usually either the, right, the left arm and leg or the right upper limb and lower limb. The impaired blood supply of the brain is essentially what causes stroke. And there are two formats. You can have impaired blood supply to the brain either because a blood vessel is blocked and therefore blood does not flow beyond the blockage point or you can have a blood vessel that bursts and when a blood vessel bursts it means that blood cannot flow beyond the area where the blood vessel is burst. The other effect of a burst blood vessel is that there will be pressure in the brain. Somebody may wake up in the morning find that they are weak on the left upper part of the body, the arm and the leg but within 30 minutes the weakness is completely gone and they are back on their feet and they are moving. This is what is called transient ischemic attack. Now, transient ischemic attack, in short TIA, is not a stroke, but it is a very important warning for an impending stroke. So the distinction here, in a transient ischemic attack, which is a flag, a red flag, a warning sign of a stroke. The symptoms are more or less the same, but in, in, in transient ischemic attack, the symptoms clear completely and the patient is perfectly normal, usually within one hour. Occasionally it may be six, seven hours, but certainly within 24 hours, the patient will have completely recovered. Anybody can get stroke, but if you have some of the things I'm going to mention, you have a high chance of getting stroke. Being older than 45 years for male, the, uh, gives you a higher risk of getting stroke. The females have a high risk when they're beyond 55 years of age. Having a family history of stroke gives you a much higher risk of getting stroke. Having had a transient ischemic attack in the past increases your risk of getting stroke. The other risk factors are having hypertension, having diabetes, having high cholesterol, uh, cigarette smoking, alcohol consumption. These are some of the other risk factors. Stroke is recognized by the sudden onset, the sudden nature of the weakness. There are, other, there are a lot of medical diseases that can give you weakness, but Let's say if somebody is a brain tumor, the weakness will set in, and somebody may still develop weakness of the upper limb and the lower limb, but it would set in very gradually over several days, weeks, even months. But stroke is sudden. Here you are, I'm sitting on the table, the next minute I can't lift my hand, the next minute I can't walk. You can prevent stroke by doing things that are certainly going to uh, prevent development of the risk factors. 
I'd mentioned that some of the risk factors are not modifiable, so you can't do much about them. You just be on the watch out. The risk factors that are modifiable are hypertension. But even before you get hypertension, make sure if you want to prevent stroke, seek medical advice. At least do a complete medical checkup once every year. You're perfectly normal, you have no headache, you have no complaints, but make sure you see your doctor at least once every year. Let them do a regular blood pressure check. Let them do a regular blood sugar check to see whether you've developed diabetes. Let them do your cholesterol levels annually to see if you're developing high cholesterol levels. That is if you don't have these diseases. But if and when you already have these diseases like diabetes, like hypertension, like uh, obesity, like high cholesterol, make sure you see your doctor and your hypertension is well managed because if your blood pressure is not properly managed, it gives you even a higher risk of getting stroke. If your blood sugar as a diabetic is not well managed, it even gives you a higher risk. So make sure you have your medical conditions properly managed, very well controlled, regular checkup with your healthcare provider, whoever the healthcare provider is. And if you do this on a regular basis, you will prevent stroke. If you have had a transient ischemic attack, make sure you go to your doctor so that they confirm why you had this temporary stroke. It means that there is one of the risk factors, uh, like I, I forgot to mention earlier, heart disease. Patients who have a large heart, patients who have a rapidly beating heart, can easily form clots within the heart. And some of these clots can spread and cause stroke. Patients who have sickle cell disease can have stroke. And patients who have uh, venous uh, a clot in the legs, and this is very common in ladies, and some ladies during pregnancy, some ladies who are taking contraceptive pills, they may develop clot in the legs, and the clot may find its way to uh, the heart, and if they have a hole in the heart, it crosses over and can cause stroke. So any of these factors, if you have, make sure you see your doctor regularly and they check regularly. Headache. Now, a lot of us ignore headache, but headache is a very important symptom. Headache may be a disease on its own, or headache may be a sign that there are other problems going on within the brain. I will talk briefly about headache. How many types of headaches do we have? There are basically two types of headaches that concern us as neurologists. According to the International Headache Society classification, headaches are classified into what we call primary headaches and secondary headaches. When we say primary headaches, what we mean are these are the headaches where there is no obvious cause that is identifiable. Now, secondary headaches are headaches that are secondary to things like head injury, road traffic accidents, assaults, injury to the head, um, motor bicycle injuries, border border injuries, and we're seeing a lot of that now. Patients fall off the motorbike, hit their head on the tarmac, and develop headaches. Those are secondary headaches post head injury. There are also headaches that result as a secondary to infections. Infections like somebody may have malaria and have a headache, somebody may have <coughs> meningitis. Meningitis is an infection that affects certain layers of the brain called the meninges. They will present with headache. Headaches can be a result of tumors in the brain, like uh, cancers in the brain, patients who have blood clot in the brain, patients who have uh, um, pus, collection of pus within the brain. These are secondary headaches. Now the management of secondary headaches, of course therefore, depends on what is causing it. If it is malaria and it's treated, the headache would go. If it is a brain tumor and it's manageable, the headache will clear. There are some patients who have headaches and you go through the history, uh, the certain patterns you may get, you do scans, you do CT scans and they're normal. You do MRI scans of the brain and they're normal. These are the patients we categorize as having primary headaches. Primary headaches are 
as you all know, you have heard of migraine headaches, you have heard of tension headaches, you have heard of uh, some headaches called cluster headaches. These are different subtypes of primary headaches. And then there's a group of patients who get what we call primary headaches, although strictly now they are classified as secondary headaches. These are patients who, whatever the cause of headaches, have gotten into the bad habit of taking a tablet. Every now and then they have a headache, they're swallowing some form of a tablet. So this is a guy who many pharmacies at home. They'll be taking brufen every two, three hours. They'll be taking Inducid every two, three hours. They'll be taking Panadol every two, three hours for a headache. Now, over time, whatever was causing the initial headache may be totally gone, but they get complications of this continued use of drugs. We call it uh, drug misuse headache. Now these are headaches you can prevent. So if, whenever you have a headache, don't just buy drugs over the counter. Go see your uh, health provider. Explain the symptoms you have so that they make a proper diagnosis. A proper diagnosis of primary headaches is on history. Migraine, how does migraine present? Migraine tends to run in families, tends to occur in the younger age group around the teen and the early 20s, mid 20s, and it usually has a pattern. It is a headache that is not there throughout the year. You may have your headache coming for about four or five days, very, very severe headache. You can't even go to work out of the blues, and after a while, about a week, the headaches disappear, and they will disappear for even six months and then you get another upside. All of a sudden you get very severe headaches, your light is very uh, bright, you can't walk, you can't, you find it difficult to sleep, it is. And then the headaches may take about a week, almost on a daily basis, and then after a week, they slowly settle down and disappear for four, five, six months, and then come. So that kind of a pattern is what you get with, um, with migraine headaches. Now, there's another set of headaches called cluster headaches, which tend to come in clusters. They're very much like migraine, but they come in, in a span of about two weeks. They could come for one or two days, disappear, two or three days, you have severe headache, and then the headache clears. So the clusters over about three, four weeks. And then when the cluster is over, the headaches totally, completely go away, and they're completely headache-free and that may take even another eight months, then you have another cluster of headaches. There's a very common form of headache called tension type headache, which is also a primary headache. This one tends to have um, a daily pattern. You wake up in the morning, you have no headache, very clear, and as the day goes on, the headache builds up. By afternoon, you have a bad headache. By evening, you have a very severe headache. You struggle to sleep, you eventually you sleep, and you wake up and you're fresh, and the cycle starts. There's no headache in the morning, by mid-afternoon the headache is getting worse, by evening, by night it's very severe. You struggle, go to sleep, the headache. That's, it's called this diurnal pattern, that's, that's usually tension type. Now tension type headaches are very interesting. They tend to be secondary to something in the environment maybe some pressure at work, some stress in school. And you typically get school children who tend to develop this fine kind of headache during school days. And then when the school holidays are there, they don't have a headache. The people who go to work, they tend to develop this headache during working days, on a weekend or any time when they don't go to work or when they are on leave or holiday, they do not have a headache. That raises a question of a tension type headache and there's some form of a stress or tension. You can also get tension type of headaches when you travel. There are people who every time they travel they know they start off with no headache but as they travel either by road or by air or whatever, they develop a headache as the travel goes on. When they finish the journey four, five, six hours, they have a very severe headache, they sleep off, the headache goes. The next time they're traveling, three, four weeks, on the day of travel, you have that kind of pattern. These are called, they're usually due to muscle tension. It may not be due to tension and stress, but there's a lot of uh, muscle tension. Sometimes people who have poor vision, 
may develop this kind of headache. They tend to get tension muscles at the back of the head. And again, that is...